hello everyone and thanks for watching as always please like and subscribe to stay across all the new content that we provide for you okay so you may remember that at the end of 2019 i posted a video on uh, the gndil 1200 watt sine wave pure sine wave inverter and as you know um, if you've seen that video i was pretty impressed with it it did a good job um, it seemed to be rated pretty well to um, in terms of its capacity and it was a good value inverter so the reason we got that was because we were going on a road trip around Australia and after um, about six months of travelling, um, just under six months after been working really well, it suddenly threw a fault. Um, this has been going great up until that point in time, but unfortunately um, we were drawing about 230 watts off the inverter, so probably only 15% of its rated capacity, and it suddenly threw a fault. Now, according to the manual there didn't seem to be any of the common fault conditions there um, it wasn't overpowered the input voltage was about you know, 12 and a half volts um, there was a minimal load on it um, there was nothing no red flags according to the manual in terms of what could have gone wrong so i reached out to giandil uh, customer support explained the problem to them and explained to them that we were traveling and we really needed to get a replacement quickly uh, because we weren't going to have time to ship it back to them have them assess it post it back to us because we're always moving from place to place. So to their credit, they, they, they came to the party and they were willing to ship us out a replacement before we got the other one back to them. So we posted the old one off to them uh, with a tracking number and they shipped this one out straight away. So this is the replacement they've sent to us. Um, so I was pretty pleased with their support. Um, the only thing that was a, perhaps a bit of a downer on the support was that um, they charged me, I think, $65 for Express Post. Um, we needed Express Post because of where we are, up here in Townsville in North Queensland. Um, but, you know, when I checked the rates myself, it was only about $25. They charged me $65. You know, not so pleased about that. But anyway, um, they were still willing to ship out the inverter and, and get it up to me nice and quick. So let's now open the box and take a quick look at what they've sent us. All right, let's take a look at what, what they've given us. Um, so it looks as though they've sent us everything. Now I did tell them, I did tell them that I'd kept the original cables because they were still wired into the van. I did also tell them I'd kept the remote and they didn't need to send either of those if they didn't want to, but it looks like they have. So they've sent both of those. Um, we've got obviously the 1200 watt inverter. This looks exactly the same as what we had before. Um, bit of a dent here actually. Ooh, that's not so good. That's interesting. Let's um, take a look and see if there's any sign of damage. This is rusted as well. This doesn't look so good. The box doesn't appear to be damaged. It looks to me... I'm wondering whether this is a remanufactured unit. I'm wondering if this is a unit that's come back for a return and they've used that as a warranty replacement. Not too sure, um, but I'm not real pleased to see physical damage on this backing plate. Uh, as well as rust. You see that's how much that's scratched off. Well, see some of that powder coating's already come off. And that just flakes off even more. So, I'm not particularly pleased with that. But anyway, it looks like the rest of the unit seems to be about alright. Um, no instruction manual, which doesn't particularly matter because I've got a manual. Um, and the last one I had also had a bag of screws and grommets, which fortunately I kept all of those. Um, but they haven't supplied that. Anyway, I think I've got everything I need. So let's go and pop it in the van now and see if it works. Right, so I'm here in the van, just about to install the inverter. And as I mentioned, there are signs of previous use in this inverter. You can see the, um, the little nuts here you hold for putting on the, the terminals. I've got some signs of wear on them, some damage on both the positive and the negative. I've already talked about the, um, the dented frame on each end and the fact that there was rust on it. Now I've put some rust converter on there and respray that so that should be fine. Um, a little bit disappointed that they sent me a second hand unit obviously um, which you know I guess the one that I sent back to them would obviously be second hand but mine was certainly in much better condition than this one was when I got it. I didn't send a unit back that had rust all over the bracket and the bracket being dented. Um, they also didn't as I said didn't send me the bag with the screws in it um, just as well I kept the old screws and the old grommets which are there for shock relief because they didn't send those either. So. Um, I dare say that this is, a, as I said, a customer returned unit that they've fixed up and sent back, but you would think that the proper thing to do would be to make sure that the, the box that's going back to a new customer contains all the accessories that it's supposed to. So a little bit of a, a mark down on Giandil's um, perhaps quality inspection service there. Um, anyway, let's pop it in and see how she works. <laughs> Okay, 
So we've got the inverter mounted in the van. Moment of truth. Let's see if she works. Beautiful. That's what we'd expect to see. A solid green light and no red over here on the fault light, which is what we had before. So just to be absolutely sure, we're going to run one of the same tests we did in the original video with this Sunbeam hairdryer. So let's turn on, just make sure that she can produce some power. So that's on the low fan speed and put it up onto the medium heat. You'll see the battery voltage is dropping down, but it's still able to hold it. We've got to the highest heat setting now, and it's still able to do that. 11.8 volts, so it's dropping down a lot. And there we finally go into overload when we hit the full power. This is an 1800 watt hair dryer, so you wouldn't expect it, this inverter to be able to power on the full power setting. But it is good that it was able to do it on the medium heat and on full fan. So it looks as though this is still producing um, the right type of output, and the same sort of things as what we saw in our test before. So in the end, this has probably become as much an evaluation of Jandil's customer support as the inverter itself. The inverter works, and I guess if you look at the big picture, um, less than a week ago, we had a faulty inverter and we're out in a remote, remote part of Australia. Within a week, we've got a replacement inverter sent to us. They didn't require us that we had sent the other one, that they'd received the other one first, so that was great. It was really good that they were willing to come to the party on that and ship out the replacement before actually seeing the unit that we'd sent to them. That's really good. It's really good that they were able to ship it as quickly as they did and that they've sent us a unit that works. So on the whole, I'm pretty happy with GNDL. On the downside, of course, um, I wasn't really pleased that we had to pay so much for express postage, considering that as a member of the public, I could see that the express postage cost was only um, you know, less than half of what they were charging me. My rate was about $25, they were charging me $65. They showed me the, the um, charge sheets that they were working off, and that's exactly what it said. It did say $65 was their cost, but that still seems pretty high considering anyone off the street can get it for less than half that. So that's a bit of a downside. They didn't post it the same day I sent the money, which is a little bit of a problem, but it wasn't a big issue because it got to us in time. Probably the biggest downside was the fact that the unit they sent me wasn't a new unit. Uh, it was obviously a second-hand unit, and obviously by someone who hadn't looked after their unit as well as I'd looked after mine. So at the end of the day, I've got a unit that works. Presumably is still covered by the original warranty um, and does what I want to. That's the main thing. So I guess I'd probably be scoring GNDL's customer support probably about seven, seven and a half out of ten, because they got us what we wanted and they acted quickly, but they didn't quite live up to the sort of quality that I would have expected. So if you're going to consider getting a GNDL inverter, I would still recommend it. I still think it's a great product. It's good value. All the things that I liked about it in the first video, those things still apply. Um, any unit can fail. You know, it's unfortunate that that's the reality. From time to time, something does go wrong. The real test then, when something does fail, is how well does the company look after you? And on the whole, I think they've done a pretty good job. Just understand that if you return a second-hand unit, you may well get a second-hand unit in return, which may not come with all the original accessories um, or in exactly the same physical condition as what your unit was. So I'd recommend that if you have to send a unit back to GNDL, hold on to as many of your accessories as you can, um, just in case the unit that you get doesn't have all the bits and pieces that yours originally came with. I'm Greg, take care, make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.